In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ our high priest interceding on our behalf may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation and by his equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them, We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. 
He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given him, given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, again, we're moving uh, in these Easter days now uh, through the Acts of the Apostles, and uh, we had a setup for this yesterday, and now the uh, Apostles are getting their chance to, if you will, have their day in court. They speak their peace. They uh, say uh, what's going on here, and one of the interesting things, one of the interesting maxims or principles that will guide them now and that they have learned is that we must obey God rather than men. So when we see the human law in one way or another uh, going against what, uh, what God wants, then it is appropriate for us to not follow that law. Now, we'll still have to deal with the consequences of that, but um, it, is, uh, it is more appropriate, certainly, and, and more important for us, excuse me, to, um, to follow God's law than to follow any human law. Now, frequently, and I think most, probably say that uh, certainly a good proportion of the laws that we have would be consistent with what God calls us to do, but there certainly are some that, um, that we should work to eliminate. There's, uh, so we have this, this wonderful maxim. It's a little bit difficult, though, to implement because it is hard at some times for us to understand what God wants us to do. And so we have to be very careful about what we do. We have to be very careful about ascribing things to God or that God has told us to do this because that has led many people astray, many cults astray and to do really awful things in the name of God, whether it's terrorism or some other form of, of cult that resulted in mass murder or all kinds of crazy things like that. So, um, so we have to be careful about our understanding of what God is telling us to do. The, the scriptures are good for us to turn to, to help guide us in understanding what God wants and that it's consistent with what he has told us. But we have to be careful about that too because we have to take scripture in its entirety. We can't just extract a particular verse from scripture and say, you know, this is, uh, this is the thing that guides us because often taken out of context, it is not appropriate at all. I remember a congressman once when they were debating um, uh, assistance to people during COVID, there was this uh, the one that said, uh, was quoting scripture and saying, if the person would not work, they should not eat. And of course, that's not what, <laughs> what was trying to be said within that situation. Paul was addressing a particular community where there were people who had work available to them and should have been doing work for the community to help build up the community and they were not, they were just gossiping. And certainly COVID was much different, a much different setting than that. Okay, uh, enough examples. Uh, it can be very difficult to do this. We have to be careful about um, what we understand God telling us in prayer, making sure that that's consistent with the scriptures, the teachings of the church, not going off in some crazy direction or something like that that would not be, be consistent with all of that. In the gospel today, we are hearing about, well, I would say a hierarchy, but what we're really uh, paying attention to now is the significance of Jesus, his connection with the Father, and how exalted a position that is. And it is important for us to remember that aspect of Jesus. There are many, um, many ways for us to relate to Jesus. 
And I think one of them, and one I hear frequently from people, and you know, is that they like to think of Jesus as a friend. They like to, and that there is certainly nothing wrong with that, with that sort of closeness that you would have with a friend, how you would share things with a friend, how you would know that the friend would support you and help you. And that's, that's a good thing. But coupled with that, we have to remember that that's not the only way to look at Jesus. We must look at him in terms of the fact that he is God and that he has a special relationship with the Father, that he, he and the Father are one. He and the Father always work together with the Holy Spirit. They're always consistent in what they do. And so we give Jesus honor and glory more than we would give a friend. We have to remember that aspect of it. We have to remember that God is so far beyond us, beyond our capabilities, beyond our understanding. These are important things to remember. And yet, and maybe this is the most amazing thing about God, is that even though he is you know, so much more powerful than we are, and in any aspect that is good, he has, a, has that, that capability in an infinite capacity, whereas ours are always limited. Even though there is all of this, he still is interested in us. He still wants to see to our goodness. He wants to see and, uh, and provide his help to us. He's not just a distant God. He's not just a God that, that um, is disinterested in what we are doing. No, he wants to be a part of all of it. And that's, that is the amazing thing. So there has to be this sort of balance between our, our understanding and sometimes difficult to achieve the, uh, the appropriate balance. I suppose we see that in the Eucharist that we receive. Here we are, um, we genuflect when we come into the church because we recognize that Jesus is present in the tabernacle, the, in the consecrated bread. We recognize that, and then yet, we eat this bread. <laughs> we take it into us. Such a close relationship that we have, though we honor the presence of the Lord. We do that, and that's appropriate. Still, we take him into us as well, and we ask for his, for his gracious help. So may this Eucharist again extend these great graces that the Lord wants to give us, may it make us fearless witnesses to the gospel, to the good news about Jesus. May it help us in not uh, in, in allowing the Lord to be close to us and to influence us and to guide us and to be our friend on the journey and also the one that we worship and adore. So let's pray. Okay. Um, Special prayers for um, uh, Joe Flores, for Lisa Trent, Father Wilbur Thomas, and Anthony Settle. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we continue to pray for comfort and healing for Susan Harrelson, James Raymond, Justin Whalen, Brandon, Marie, Madison Placencia. Christine Williams, Karen Metcalf, Jimmy Dean Paris, uh, Sandra and Gary Coggins, Sherry Riley, Jerry Brower, and Jean Marr. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we offer the Mass today uh, for the happy repose of the soul of Patrick Hunkler. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the homeless. May Christ, who had nowhere to lay his head, act in and through all the faithful in the diocese to provide for the needs of their brothers and sisters who lack housing. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the people of Ukraine that the current hostilities will cease and that the nations of the world will respond generously to assist the needs of those suffering from wounds or the deprivation of the necessities of life. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we uh, pray that the Lord send his spirit upon the church who worships and glorifies him. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
Um, any other prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Let's uh, conclude our prayers then with the 50th anniversary prayer for the diocese. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina, under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential hand. Confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.